<laughs> Sub 250G freestyle slash cinematic four inch FPV drone with a GoPro. Hello and welcome to the video, you bunch of drone nerds. Today we are going to be building a Sub 250G freestyle slash cinematic FPV quad that holds a GoPro and is still going to be under 250 grams with a GoPro and a battery. So this is going to be the quad that we are building today. This is the Flywoo Explorer LR4 V2 frame with Zing motors, an all-in-one flight controller and also a Cadix Vista. So this is a HD quad. This frame is normally used for long range flying, but I'm going to use it just for freestyle and for cinematic purposes. I don't need a long, long flight time, but I need enough. I need this drone to carry a GoPro and I also need it to be HD and I also need it to be pretty quick and nimble. If you don't know already, drones are in the A1 open category if it's under 250 grams. So that means that you have less restriction on where you can fly these things and the distance that you can fly away from uninvolved people changes dramatically too. So they are some of the benefits of having a drone that's under 250 grams. I also need this drone to carry a GoPro. So at the moment we've got the Naked Hero 6 on here. This will be changed for a Naked Hero 9 in the future as well. So I'm going to take you through my process and the build of this. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's get cracking. So let's get straight into the build, hey? So here we have all of the parts that I will need for this build. We got the Flywoo LR4 V2 Explorer frame and on it already I've mounted the um, Jehiehu Hams MCU uh, 420 F4, whatever it is board, here it is. The next thing we have is the Cadex Vista. This thing is um, able to be made naked as well, so maybe we'll make it naked if we have to, but if not, then we'll keep it as it is. The motors I will be using on this are the iFlight 1404 3800 kV motors. They should weigh about 8.5 grams each, but I guess we'll find out in a minute when we weigh them. Um, hopefully they're not too bad, but they do look pretty sexy. So we've got TBS Crossfire, obviously, as always. And then we've got our antenna, which is like the new style of Cadix uh, Vista antenna. The camera that we're going to be using is the Runcam Link camera. I actually don't think this camera is great, but I'm going to use it anyway because it's all I've got. Okay, let's weigh the parts in as well then. First thing is the frame and the IAO board. All in one board with the top plate on, it's about 53 grams. Next thing, naked GoPro. Can't be forgetting this because I want this build to be under 250 grams with a GoPro. 29 grams for the GoPro. Around about 10 grams per motor. The camera is going to be about 9 grams. If we do have to, we can use the Nebula Nano, which I don't want to because it's even worse, but that's only 5 grams. The antenna, how much does that weigh? A measly 2 grams. Lovely jubbly. And the Vista itself weighs, I think, around 20 grams. Yeah, 20 grams. Oh, my batteries are done. TBS Crossfire and the antenna, 5 grams. And can't forget those props. These are the Gem Fan props. Um, I'll put them on the screen because I can't remember what they're called. But they're about 6 grams. And then the battery I'm going to be using is the Gold Line or AU Line uh, 450 milliamp ATC 4S battery. They're about 53 grams. So I piled it all onto the scales to see what it would weigh all up, and it was about 220 grams. So we've got 30 grams to play with for screws, 3D prints, other bits and bobs that need to go in there that I don't know about yet. And uh, I do not know what I am doing with my hands here. What the? Okay, first things first. I'm going to start at the back of the frame with the Cadix Vista and the placement of that. I 3D printed these little spacers, which are actually really, really nice because they have little channels underneath uh, for the wires to run through and back to the flight controller, which means that you can run those wires through there underneath the Vista and it will be quite nice and clean and tidy. I'll leave the link for this in the description. And then the Vista goes in. I've checked that the screws are just about long enough to get a nut on the end. And also for the eagle eyed of you, the Vista is upside down and that is for a reason, that's because I want as much room at the bottom of that for the UFL connector for the antenna. You want to check that all your wires are long enough, so for me the TX and RX wire were both long enough but the positive and negative red and black wires were not long enough, so I replaced those for some longer ones. 
Nice and neat little solder blobs there. Not the greatest in the world, but you know, good enough. And then I just finished off twisting all the wires up nice and tight because it just looks way neater and like just gets everything out of the way. Twist them into pairs of twos, thread them through the 3D printed mount, and then that can be routed to the flight controller and then we can start soldering the wires in. As you can see, I've left the Vista at the back, so then I'll be able to fold that over with the wires and mount it to the back. So what I've done here is I've just soldered the red and the black wires to the positive and negative battery pads and the grey and the white wires to RX and TX. And there's me folding it over and sticking it on the back. I think that looks quite neat and there's lots of room for that UFL connector at the back. I decided it was easier to put the antenna whilst the Vista was out the quad, so I took it back out, put the antenna back on, and then that way, this is why I put the antenna at the bottom, because now you've got more room for that to be situated there at the back. Installed the 3D print that came with the quad, and then there you go, we're all ready to go on the Vista. That part of the quad is completely done. So the next thing I moved on to was the motors. The motor screws that came with the motors were too long, so I found some that were not too long, and I went ahead and put some Loctite on a bit of plastic for me to dip those screws in every single time. Make sure you don't forget this. This goes a long way, and make sure that you won't strip your screws when you're flying or you're crashing or whatever. Tighten them up good and tight, and then we're going to repeat this for all four motors. And yes, two screws is definitely enough. We're, we're building a lightweight drone here, people. We don't need three screws. Or four. So all four motors are now installed. A bit messy though, isn't it? So we're going to get some tape on those arms. And there we are, nice and neat. Now we've got some room to work and solder these motors up. So going around every single motor, just soldering up these wires nice and neatly, getting as much wire as possible off to save weight, but also without making it too tight and too um, cramped in there. So get, leave a good amount of slack, a little bend in the wire is always good, and then just solder each motor. This is what it should look like when you've soldered all four motors, nice blobs, no rubbish connections there, all decent solder joints and there we go, motors are done. So then I moved on to the crossfire. I threaded the antenna through the little hole in the bottom of the frame using the 3D print for the Immortal T, and then I could move on to where I was actually going to situate the receiver. I wanted to situate the receiver in the quad, like, around here, like, levitating above the board, not touching anything, but obviously that requires a 3D print, so I jumped onto Tinkercad, and don't get me wrong, I am no 3D designer, I just went onto Tinkercad, put some cylinders and some squares together, and then now I have this lovely little mount that will work, and we can put that in the quad and mount the crossfire in it. So obviously, when you 3D print stuff, it has support material, so you have to take that out, and then there we go. I think that's a pretty good solution for it all. And the crossfire receiver then just gets slid into this mount. And it looks lovely and neat. And we can go ahead and solder those wires to the board. I'm quite proud of myself of that, you know. So tin the wires first. Obviously, I haven't mentioned that yet in this video. You've got to tin all your wires before you solder them. And then these wires can be twisted up and put onto the board. So now I'm going to install the FPV camera, which again is the Runcam Link camera. I'm not a huge fan of this camera, to be quite honest with you. If I had a proper DJI one here, I'd be installing that. But hey ho, we'll go with it for now. So we can install that by putting the coaxial cable back onto the camera and then screwing that back plate back to that. And there we go. It fits quite nicely. And we're just going to have a quick mid-build way in so we can see where we're at. And we're at about 124 grams. I think we're just about on track, you know. That with the naked GoPro and a battery, meh, you know, we'll be all right. And now we can install the two side camera mounting plates, put the screws in them ready to go. And then straight away afterwards, we can uh, take it out because we need to get to that USB port to program everything into beta flight. This is a huge pain in the ass, I know, and that's what happens when you don't spec your builds properly and you didn't realise that the all-in-one flight controller you're using has to be mounted sideways because it won't literally won't fit in there the normal way. So if you haven't guessed it already, this is me just soldering the XD60. The way I do this is I put a nice bend into the wires and then I tin them so they're flush already. So when they sit on the quad, they're going to be bent back a little bit um, so they can reach the battery a little bit better. 
This is why I leave it till the end because I put the battery on top and made sure that that wire was just about the right length for the battery cables to go to it. And there we go, now we can plug it into Betaflight and do some programming. Um, if you want a video about how to do this, I will do it, but right now I'm just going to say set up Betaflight like you normally would with the UARTs and whatnot. Now we're going to install the vinyl parts, which is the 3D print on top for the Naked GoPro, and also the top plate. So let's have an official weigh-in. At the end of the build, we're at about 171 grams, no battery and props. 224 with just a battery. And then with props, we're at about 230 grams, people. And then with the prop screws in, we are at about 233 grams. Plus, also, after this, I made a little cable that goes from the balance connector on the battery to the GoPro, and that adds about another 4 grams. So, we're about 237. Yes, lads, we did it. We've got a sub 250G freestyle slash cinematic 4-inch FPV drone with a GoPro. Uh, I have no... I can't remember what I'm saying, but I've just hit record, and... Uh... We're just gonna go. So we've come out to our local little spot here and we've got the drone with us. Unfortunately, I forgot the fucking cable, didn't I? To connect the naked GoPro. So sorry, you don't have footage from this spot here, but here is some chase footage from Brent flying behind me just now. So my first impressions of flying this drone, it doesn't quite fly like a five inch. It is super, 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 super floaty and it feels like a toothpick. Um, that's how powerful it is. It's super duper powerful, but it does float. For days and it is difficult to get underneath obstacles if you're already flying straight towards them as we found out a second ago i mean i'm not gonna put this in the video because then it makes me f seem silly doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> it feels really really powerful it doesn't handle very well round corners it's a bit slippery and i think that's because of these gem fan by blade props the dead cat feels weird to me too the dead cat style um, frame feels weird to me too. I'm used to a like a true X or a stretch X on the like apexes, neutrinos, they're all stretched X. So uh, flight time on it is about four to five minutes on a 450 4S battery, which I think is more than enough. Some of my five inches don't even fly for that long. They fly for like three minutes. So four or five minutes with this, with a GoPro, everything on it, bloody amazing, mate. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there are less restrictions to fly this drone because it's under 250 grams that puts it in the A1 open subcategory. So that means that you can have less minimum distance to uninvolved people. It means you can fly it in more built up areas, etc, etc, etc. All right, drone nerds, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments where you would fly this drone yourself. Leave a like, subscribe if you like the video and don't forget to uh, be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> and check my description. I can't say descript, you say descript. Check the links in the description for any information in this video. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a subscriber button and whatever. And I'll see you in the next one. Here's a little edit from this drone considering I forgot the cable. So now I'm gonna go somewhere else, fix the drone and then go fly it for you. And this is that footage now. Bye.